Endurance Junkie Podcast, episode 83. Hey junkies, what's up? Thanks for joining me on a new episode of the Endurance Junkie Podcast the show where I will be interviewing some of the fastest, smartest, and most inspiring people active in the endurance world today. Now, if you like these little interviews and don't want to miss any future episodes, just head over to iTunes or Stitcher and subscribe to the show. And while you're there, I would also appreciate a rating and a review. Besides tweeting, retweeting, or sharing all the content on Facebook, which you're always allowed to do, Having good ratings and reviews will also help new listeners to find us in the different podcast directories. So it's really important, and I appreciate everyone who has done so so far. All right, today's show, we have Lucy Bartholomew. And Lucy hails from Australia, and she's one of the world's best young trail runners. She completed her first 100k race at the age of 15, and in the meantime, her race credentials are nothing but impressive. She was a junior skyrunning world champion in Chamonix a few years ago. She won the YCC, which is the youth events at UTMB in 2016. And this year, she won the Ultra Trail Australia 100k on her 21st birthday and placed 5th at TDS, which is the wilder and more technical sister race of UTMB. Hi Lucy, thanks for uh, your time and thanks for coming on the show. Now, for those of us who don't know you, can you start off by telling us a bit about yourself? your sporting background growing up in Australia and how you ended up in ultra running. Yeah, thanks for having me. Um, My name is Lucy Bartholomew. I grew up in Melbourne, Australia. Um, Kind of fell into the sport through my dad. Uh, He was a marathon runner and just kind of getting older, getting slower. And so he went longer and he started running ultras um, and specifically the 100 kilometer distance. So I kind of watched him and that was just like my normal, uh, was my dad training for a hundred Ks and, uh, yeah, I just kind of wanted to, uh, to be a part of that. I wanted to share, I saw him finish an event and I wanted to be, to share that. Um, I saw the, I saw the elites finish. I saw him finish and then I saw the back of the pack finish and I thought that, you know, sport that is for everybody. And I was never a runner growing up. I, I sucked in school. I was kind of bringing up the rear at athletics and cross country, played a lot of team sports, uh, more for the social side of things. But out of the three, my two brothers and I, I would say that I was probably the least likely to do anything sporty. Um, But yeah, it's amazing what uh, when you don't have any pressure to do anything and you're just doing it to spend time with your dad and for the love of it, um, how powerful and strong that passion can be. So I ended up running uh, side by side with him at the age of 16, 100 kilometers in Victoria along the uh, Victorian coastline and uh, finished that race and went, yeah, this is the race for me. Like I get to, I get to run in beautiful places with awesome people, but I also get to eat like a shitload of food. And, you know, if I can combine those two things, like I'm really good at eating and like, I'm pretty stubborn. So like, this is the sport for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but running 100 kilometers at age 16, isn't that a bit too taxing on, on, on your body? Yeah, and for sure, like there was definitely um, a lot of backlash about it. We got, we actually had a lot of uh, press really, uh, press people messaging and in, interviewing and stuff because, yeah, you know, for sure on a female's body, 16 years old, you're growing, you're at school, like mentally, physically, emotionally, Um But, you know, like people that I wouldn't say, you know, you roll out of bed and go for 100 kilometers as a 16 year old. uh, But I've been running for uh, for a year of consistently um, getting stronger, easy runs. And I was very, very um, specific in my lead up to it. And I think that these people that were saying, you know, this is dangerous. You're like saying to my parents, it's bad parenting. Um you know, like I, I can understand where they're coming from and it's from a good place. But at the same time, you know, I knew what I was capable of. I knew what I was taking on, taking on. And it was that classic, um, thing of tell me I can't and I'll show you I can, uh, which is the attitude I've had in life. Um, 
And I was just, my whole goal for that race was like to just run through with a smile and to kind of just like confirm that this is, I'm doing this for the right reasons. I'm not here to break myself. I'm not here to like make a name for myself. I'm merely here to run a hundred Ks with my dad. Um, and yeah, I'm still normal. I'm still, I grew, I've got, you know, I, I'm not, a. I'm not scarred from the experience, so I hope, and I, I know that I have, uh, you know, paved the way for younger people to to not to think that that's not impossible, um, as long as you're doing it in a safe and uh, you're, you're training towards it correctly. Yeah, and I think definitely 16 is sort of like that brink of, of adulthood, and you might have some children or yeah, kids at 16 who are, yeah, more more like children, and you have other other ones who are leaning more towards ad- adults than and who are capable of doing it and you probably i mean of what i hear you definitely had the right mindset then in going into that race yeah and i owe that a lot to my dad um and you know the fact that you know the, the race director said you have to run side by side with your dad um you cannot leave him and you know at the start of the race i kind of like went off <laughs> and <laughs> dad reined me in and said you know like dude it's a long way chill out let's just like sit back um and then, yeah, and then ultimately I got tired in the middle and uh, so then he kind of helped me through that and then he always gets tired around that six or seven hour mark. So I helped, I started to perk up and he started to, to crash a little and we really helped each other. But because I got to the finish line with uh, feeling great and having just such an amazing day, an amazing experience, I... I wanted to run 100Ks again. I always say that like my whole career uh, comes down to that race. Had I finished that race, gone full gas like I tried to at the start, I probably would have finished and gone, I never want to run 100Ks again. That was awful. Um, but to be finishing and to be smiling and to be happy and to be like, wow, I just proved a lot of people uh, wrong and myself, you know, I, I doubted what, whether I could do it and I was willing to stop at 50, 60, 70 K. But um, yeah, like a powerful mind leads to a powerful body. And I was, uh, I'm grateful for that race in that day. Finishing that race was really important for you. And that really set you up for, um, like, this is what I want to do. This is what I want to continue doing and, and try to make it to the higher level and, and maybe become a pro. Was, was that that moment already? Yeah, look, probably at that point, you know, 16, I was kind of like, yeah, sweet, like that was good. And I wasn't, I'm not a long term thinker. You're like, um, you know, anyone asks me what my plans are for racing in the next few years, and I'll be like, oh, you know, I'll see what comes. I'll just go with the flow, you know, what interests me. Um, I barely know what I'm going to have for for lunch today, you know, and that's in two hours. Um, so, you know, I was never looking at it as a long-term thing, which again, I think made it really kind of like, it was all fresh. It was all exciting. It wasn't kind of like three year plan, you know, like a lot of people leave school and they're like, I'm going to study for three years and I'm going to buy a house and I'm going to have kids and I'm going to do this. And I'm just not that type of person. And I was kind of like, yeah, you know, I'll see what gets thrown at me. Had I got injured, had I, um, my body said, no, I can't do this. I didn't have my goals set on anything. I was just like, I just want to run. Uh, it's like how I like to start my day. Uh, it's my time with my dad. It makes me feel good. Um, and yeah, there was no long-term commitment to it. Uh, that came later. What we definitely see you, a lot of you, is, is on Instagram. Um, and, and I think you can sort of relate with all the other Instagram accounts by ultra runners and, and long distance athletes. You know, you guys make it sound really glamorous. You're in the those most amazing places in the world and, and you run in these amazing sceneries. But Yeah, can you shed some light on what it's really like to be an ultra runner? Yeah, for sure. And, like, my Instagram is totally raw to my life. Um, You know, I share a lot. My dad spoke to me. I'm in South Africa at the moment, and I spoke to him this morning, and he said, you know, I was like, oh, you know, yesterday I ran on Table Mountain. He was like, yeah, I saw an Instagram. He goes, and you had this for dinner. And I was like, whoa, like, (laughs) you know, we don't even need to talk. You know know everything about me. Um, And that's how I want it to be with the people that follow me is that they can – see exactly what I do and I'm not hiding anything or trying to make it look more glamorous than what it is. Um, I think that, you know, it's, uh, it's not a glamorous lifestyle. It's not, you don't make a, an, like any money for me at this stage um, out of it. And I think that that's really cool because it means that I'm like, uh, people know that I'm just doing this because I love it. Um, 
you know, there is, there's bad training days, there's bad weather in the mountains, there's days where, like, I'm just like, oh, this is shit. Like, you know, I have days like that, but, like, I'm pretty open to share that on Instagram. And the mo- the amount of people that can relate back to me and say, oh, it's so nice to see you have a bad race, a bad day, to, to eat something that's not super healthy every now and then. Like, I'm a normal 21-year-old, uh, and I never want to be seen as anything but – um, a normal person, you know, um, and I think that it's it's unfair to be flaunting a life that's uh, that's not real because it just makes other people go, oh, like my life is in comparison, it's not as good. Um, but yeah, you know, like I traveled when I left school, I went overseas and all on my own budget. I left with. Um, I came back to Australia with $5 in my bank account. By the end of it, I was eating cliff bars for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Um, I was, yeah, like sleeping on verandas, couches, anything. And yeah, like bumming around, it's the best way to do it. Like I wouldn't change that. You know, you can put me in a five-star hotel and I'll be like, well, that's nice. Like, cool, but save your money and put me on a beach with a, <laughs> with a tent and I'll be sorted. Yeah, it definitely helps to put you things in perspective. Does does running feel like a job to you then at the moment or is it still fun? Oh, totally not a job. Um, you know, people, I, someone said to me the other night, oh, you're, um, what's it like to be a professional athlete? And I was like, oh, man, like I'm not a professional athlete. I feel like for me, you know, I'm still just on a gap year. Okay, so it's year three of my gap year from leaving school. <laughs> um, and like ultimately I'm looking for a gap life. <laughs> um, yeah. But uh, yeah, like I do not see it as a job. I'm not making money off it. I'm just merely getting by, gaining experience, traveling, having fun. And, you know, like I would rather die with memories in my mind than money in my pockets. And that's always been my philosophy. I don't value things. I value experiences. And this is just an awesome way at the moment to um, to gain those things. Uh, I think that for me, the minute that it becomes a job and it's not enjoyable, I will happily stop because I'm, I don't believe that running – like I don't know how people would run 100Ks if they didn't love it uh, because there's a lot of reasons to stop out there. Um, and, yeah, I just think that, that could, that's like the worst thing that can happen out of all of this. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, so you, you run that first race at 16. You're 21 now. Um, There's five years of, of – six years of, of, of pretty solid training. Um, how has your training evolved over these um, last couple of years? Um, so when I started running with my dad, it was all just very slow, um, kind of like, yeah, just easy runs, which I think is just like a great base building without even knowing it. I was building just like really good cardio, really strong muscles and stuff like that. Um, which then has now meant that I can train harder, longer, faster. Um, you know, I've been coached by three different people, uh, in those six years being Brendan Davies in Australia. Um, and then Emily Forsberg uh, of Salomon, and mm-hmm. now Mayal Backhausen, who's an Australian Salomon runner. And they've just, um, you know, it hasn't been that one hasn't worked for me and I've just moved on. It's been that just the races that I was targeting wasn't um, in their specialty or they didn't know the area or they've run it themselves. Um, and I think that they've all kind of g- given me something. Uh, Brendan taught me a lot about speed and the importance of doing those sessions. Uh, at the time, I was not someone who wanted to be doing that. Um, and then Emily taught me about time on legs, uh, getting out there, vertical gain, um, and like not really worrying about kilometers. It was more about just being out there because mountains, like, they dictate the pace and how far you're going to go. Uh, and then now, Mayel is kind of like a really nice combination of the two. Um, and yeah, he's just kind of like taken taken what they've given me and brought me to another level. So it's definitely changed and it's definitely, you know, it's different. Yeah, like I'm racing differently now. I'm not racing to complete it, which of course I always am. The goal is to get to the finish line, but, you know, I'm trying to compete along the way. Um, But, uh, yeah, like nonetheless, I will just – I'll do a lot of uh, easy running and long days because they're my favorite. No, okay. So how did you go about then creating your, your year plan and, the, and pick the races that you want to do? Uh, <laughs> I kind of just go off, uh, you know, how I feel and what uh, what places, what people, what uh, 
it, what interests me about them. I'm not someone who's like in four years time, I want to be running Western States 100. Um, I kind of, I wish that I had did because then I could really develop a pet plan. I could be specific from a long way out, but you know, coming to Ultra Trail Cape Town, uh, where I am now for this weekend, I only decided maybe two, three weeks ago that I was going to come and to pull another hundred into the year. Is, it's a big ask, but you know, I've been wanting to get to South Africa. I see it as like good day or bad day. It's a great experience. Uh, I feel fresh. I feel healthy after this. I'm going to kick back, eat Christmas food and, you know, celebrate the new year. Um, and then looking towards the next year, I'm, there's a few like series and stuff that you can follow with Salomon. So I'm looking that maybe I will just uh, pick a series and it can be a little bit more regimented and like these are your five races. You have to complete, compete in three, which ones you're going to do. This is the grand final race. Like, uh, so that helps a lot. But previous to that, I will just do anything. And that, um, was really exciting to me. And, you know, I will always do that because I race my best when I'm like, loving life and loving where i am okay so yeah cape town um people say that it's, it's the greatest city in the world to live i mean do you agree with that i mean you come from melbourne it's a pretty cool place as well yeah i would um i love i'm loving south africa and cape town specifically uh just you know uh this yesterday i ran up table mountain the iconic uh mountain which is just totally rugged um more rock climbing than I thought than, uh, than running. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, we were up there, it was like rain and like hailing winds. Uh, and then within 45 minutes, we were down off the mountain on the beach, having smoothies, 32 degrees. Um, and I think that you can get like a real mountain experience, uh, without having to go very far at all. Um, and I'm a beach and a mountain lover, so I couldn't think of a better combination. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, to be honest, like Melbourne, uh, <laughs> I would rather be here. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Right, good stuff. So what are your expect your expectations going into the race then on uh, Saturday or Sunday? What is it? Sunday? Saturday. Saturday. Um, okay. yeah, it's going to be a really tough race. I think like physically, I know I can run a hundred kilometers at the moment. I know that I'm fit, but I think that the real thing that struck me yesterday, seeing some of the course is kind of the mental uh, how draining mentally this will be because it's so technical and there's a lot of rocks and a lot of kind of like scrambling sections and uh, places where you're like, okay, so this is where you have to put your foot down and this is where you need to ease off because you need to save yourself for this climb. And it's just kind of like never ending. Um, it's, I think it's going to be quite uh, tiring to just uh, go through those motions. It's very kind of stop, start running. Um, and I, it's one of the things that I can be sometimes quite lazy with. It's kind of if I'm on a climb and I have to walk, you know, back in the day, I'd be like, well, I'm going to walk to the top. And, you know, I learned uh, through Chamonix and training on really big mountains where to get to the top's 15 kilometers. Um, but that's a long way to walk, so you need to start running. And this is going to be just 100 Ks of kind of like run walking um, with a purpose. So, yeah, I think I'm really looking forward to it. I think it's going to be a real challenge for me. It's it's more technical than what I would normally do in some of the sections. Um, but, you know, like the only way to get better at what you're not good at is to do it. So I'm just going to do it. All right, well, good luck and yeah, have fun. And we'll, we'll all look, uh, look out to the results and uh, see how you did. Um, yeah, thank you. Yeah, another thing, and you probably get this one a lot, is because um, it's a big part of you, and that's nutrition. Can you talk a bit about that? Yeah, so, um, yeah, I kind of feel like when I started to really take my running seriously, uh, a big part of that, um, you know, running is great, but to fuel your running uh, is such a key thing. Um, and I really believe that what you fuel, your, you are what you eat, you know, what you fuel yourself with is going to give you the, the strength and the power to get through what you're doing. Um, so I f currently follow a plant-based diet, um, being mainly a vegan diet. And, uh, you know, I've run since being 16, I, I ate meat, then I went vegetarian, then I got told that like, you can't be a female ultra runner being those things. And, you know, that, <laughs> that thing I was saying before of tell me I can't and I'll show you I can. <laughs> um, yeah. And that I was like, I'm going to make this work. Um, and I've just loved it. Uh, I've never felt better. I've never run better. I've never recovered better. 
Um, so yeah, it's been a real joy to share it on Instagram and Facebook and kind of, uh, open people's eyes to, you know, what you can eat, that it's not, uh, just, you know, carrot sticks and celery sticks. Um, and yeah, it's, uh, I've got a lot of time, Hey, like at the moment. So between running and eating, like I can, I can afford to to put a bit of time into what I'm eating. Yeah. Okay. So when's the cookbook coming out then? Oh, it's taking its sweet time, (laughs) you know? (laughs) When I say I've got a lot of time, I can I can waste that time really well as well. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. Uh, no, but there, there's a, a book coming. Is it because it was a bit of a joke question? I didn't know, but uh... oh yeah, 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 yeah. So I've been like, gosh, uh, for a while now, um, and I'm working on it. It's in the background. I'm just slowly building up. You know, I love to to travel and take the recipes from where I am. Uh, you know, like recently being in China and being in Cape Town. Um, you know, like a lot of their dishes do have meat in them, but then to be able to to re- rework it and to not miss out on what is cultural and what are the, the flavors of this city um, or country. And, uh, yeah, that's kind of what I want the cookbook to be is just like uh, from places that I've visited um, and, you know, how I've gotten around and made it all work, uh, how to be able to eat in these areas. So, yeah, I feel like the more I travel, the better the book will be. So I'm not in any rush to put it out. Uh, okay, so in the meantime, people can check out your Instagram account, right? Yeah, and the rep- the full recipes are on my website. Oh, yeah, on the website as well. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, so it's only been five years that you're, that you're uh, competitive, but what, what do you see as your biggest achievement in, in the sport so far, and, and what's your biggest disappointment? Uh, my biggest achievement was uh, probably when I – first went over to Chamonix as part of the Australian New Zealand sky running team back in 2014. It was for the sky running world championships and I ran in the Mont Blanc marathon. Um, it was just my first time overseas, first time seeing these races, uh, these courses and these mountains. Um, and you know, I got there early because I was like, I'm going to train on the course and I ended up training in the course on reverse. I just, for some reason, it just didn't click that, um, so I was just, you know, like I thought that I was really, really prepared. And then we all stood on the start line standing the other way. And, um, yeah, Rookie mistake. I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. I was like classic. Right. Um, and yeah, I finished that race as the first junior and became the junior world sky running champion, uh, which was a, you know, just a massive thing, especially for an Australian girl who is, lives in Melbourne city. You know, it's not, I'm not a mountain goat. I wasn't born on the Hills. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm just a stubborn girl. Um, and yeah, that was kind of like a really, really cool moment for me. Something that I'll always, uh, treasure as an achievement, you know, on my, my resume of results, that looks great. Um, Obviously, there have been many other races that have been uh, key moments. but And then my biggest disappointment was probably the Sky Running World Championships last year. <laughs> um, I think because, you know, 2014, junior Sky Running champion, and then 2016, uh, I was no longer a junior. Um, and so I was in with the big crew, but I thought that I was still going to be, you know, around that competitiveness. And you know, the female, uh, competition is way higher these days. Um, and the course didn't suit me. And I just had a shocker because, and it's the same deal. The minute you like put an expectation on how it's going to be and where you're going to finish and what time you're going to do, it's really hard to, to mentally be like, okay, I'm not on course for what I thought I was. I'm not in the position I thought I was. And it just got to me. It was just kind of the first race where I wasn't where I thought I should be. And, I just kind of gave up um, and I look back on it and I just think, wow, you know, that's probably probably the only race that I've, because of that race, I don't do it. I'm pretty good now, but just rec- recognizing that that was a, a moment where I was like, nah, like screw this. This is just like, I'll just walk it in. Um, and yeah, like that was a really, I look back and it's a disappointment, but it's also like a big learning curve that has meant that I've gotten through other races. Uh, yeah, with uh, a bit more passion. Yeah, okay. So do you do something specific now to, to train the mental part, uh, the mental aspect? Um, Not so much. Like I don't – I wouldn't say that I'm like training specifically for it. I just kind of – you know, I have a real philosophy of, you know, uh, you know, I have a tattoo on my wrist that says is the symbol for Kuna Matata uh, from The Lion King, mm-hmm. which means no worries. And for me, it's just kind of like at the end of the day – first or last, uh, finish or whatever, um, you know, the, 
getting out there is that's it. You know, that's half of it. Um, and I'll always believe that as lame as it sounds, as cliched as it is. Um, yeah, like, man, the things I've done, the things I've seen, I wouldn't change it. And if a bad race is going to, like, stop me from enjoying it, then, yeah, like, maybe maybe it's not the sport for me because there's going to be a lot of bad races and bad moments in ultra running, right? Yeah, okay. I guess it makes sense if you're not really you know, dependent on the paycheck or for the moment uh, that, yeah, you can you can maybe easier place it a lot easier if, if the race is not going according to plan. What's the greatest piece of advice that you've received in, in the sport so far? Um, probably, uh, very interesting advice, probably from my dad, um, which would just be, you know, like, um, you know, don't let running define you. Like it is just running. And, you know, regardless of whether I am looking for a paycheck or not like that, if you're running for paychecks, then I don't think you're running for the right reasons. Um, Mm -hmm. and you're not in the right sport because there is not much money in this sport and yeah like to me it's just that's so far from why I run I wouldn't race another if I didn't race another day in my life I'd run every day like it doesn't it's just a means to go to places a good place to push yourself and find what you're capable of um yeah and I guess you know for me like it is it's just running it's a small part of who I am it doesn't define me. It doesn't make me a good or a bad person. A bad race doesn't mean that I'm no longer, um, you know, no longer worthy of um, a great life. I think that people uh, can become a bit too dependent on it. And, yeah, you learn pretty quickly that these races, they're so long and you will have moments that are bad um, and you'll have bad races. So, yeah, I guess the best piece of advice is it's just running at the mm-hmm. end of the day. Okay. So how do you define success and, and how do you measure up to your own definition? Uh, like success for me is, you know, really kind of just like um, enjoying the experience, being able to kind of like come away with something and learning something. Um, you know, even in a bad race, you'll look back and you'll say, okay, like what what can I do to improve? And that's kind of the lure of doing another race and another race and another race because you're just looking for that um, that ultimate race where it all clicks, you know, I had a race this year in ultra trail Australia, um, where it was my 21st birthday. It was this race that I'd run when I was 18. It was a big part of me. Um, and that was the day that it clicked for me and like, wow, I've never felt that kind of, like, I get goosebumps talking about it because it was just a day that everything worked and you strive for that. Um, but it'll only happen every now, every, every now and then. Mm Um, and you know, like that was a, a successful race, but it I had to have failures and success previous to that to have that race. So, um, yeah, just uh, getting it done is always successful. Yeah, okay. All right, thanks Thanks for your time, Lucy. Um, how can people get in touch with you if they want to? Um, on uh, Facebook as Lucy Bartholomew, Instagram as Lucy underscore Bartholomew. I'm on Strava um, and on my website. Okay, cool. I'll put those links up on uh, on the show notes page. Feel free to give some uh, some love to your sponsors and, and your partners. Yeah, I'm really grateful to be sponsored by Salomon um, and Sunto, Cliff Bar, um, Labent Socks, and Vital Greens. Um, they've been a very sh- uh, big part of getting me to where I am and fueling me every day. So it's uh, it's a real pleasure to be uh, promoting them. Okay, cool. Anything else you want to plug? uh nope <laughs> okay well, happy with that all right then there's only one thing for me to do and that's wish you all the best for uh, the race on saturday cool thank you so much thanks lucy bye-bye all right guys thanks for listening to this uh, episode with uh, lucy bartholomew uh, you can follow her uh, ultra trail cape town race on the events website which is uh ultra cape and uh, yeah, i think there's a link on the home page there to uh, a live tracker page so it should be pretty straightforward to follow her, uh, her progress on the race. All right, thanks again for listening, and I hope you'll join me next time. Cheers. Cheers.